Cherise, nutritionist and author of the One Pot Alkaline Diet Cookbook. If you haven't ordered it, do so now. Today, I actually wanna make one of the recipes from the book with you to show you just how easy the alkaline diet can actually be. So all the recipes in this book are plant-based and alkaline, and they will take you about 10 minutes to prep, no more than 10 ingredients, and they're all in one pot. It's so simple, and that's why I wanna do with it with you live today. So we are going to do recipe on page 130, the vegetable chow mein. We're gonna make this one here today, and it's gonna be super quick, super simple. It'll take us about 10 minutes of prep together. I'll do a little bit of cooking on the stove and bring it back to you. So let's get started so I can show you how quick and simple this is. We're gonna start by taking a whole cabbage. This is actually pretty big. Um, but I'm not opposed to it considering it's a <laughs> It's really, really big. Um, but considering it's supposed to replace the noodles in the chow mein, <laughs> I'm clearly doing a good job cutting through. I even swear I uh, sharpened my knife before this. Um, but you're gonna start by taking your cabbage and cutting it in half. And then you're just gonna roughly chop it up because it's gonna be acting like our noodles actually, because it's so big, I might chop it in quarters actually so I'll kind of make a column what you have I'm gonna take the core off as well and then I'm just gonna chop it into big strips basically so replacing the noodles in a more traditional chow mein because the wheat is not alkaline and we want to keep this 100% alkaline because all recipes in our book are 100% alkaline so we're gonna put this in our pot you need a big pot for this just because it's gonna oops I didn't get the whole core there um, just because it's gonna take a bit to cook down the cabbage. So at first it's gonna take up a lot of space, but then it'll cook down and then it'll actually be a lot smaller. But anyways, ignore my fighting with this cabbage today. <laughs> Might be having a day. I've actually been having a bit of a day fighting with this video camera here, but hopefully it stays working for us through this video. Now I'm gonna do the second half. So I'm gonna cut off the core first this time. <laughs> which is maybe what I should have done the first time. And I'm gonna cut it again into quarters where normally I wouldn't have to, but this one is huge. But I don't mind that because it just adds more bulk to the meal, which makes it more filling, which, you know, I like to eat volume. I like to have lower calorie foods and more volume just because I actually quite love food. And so that's the way I kind of do it. So this is really gonna fill up my pot here the biggest pot I have, so we're just gonna be working with it today. I'm missing the core on some of these. Anyways, that, that's simple to do that one. And we'll just finish this up here. One more to go. I didn't get the whole core. Like I said, a little, little flustered here because my camera hasn't been working, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep going and work with it because you know what? Life throws us curls and we just make the most of it, right? That's what we're gonna do today. You can cut this as you know thin or as thick as you'd like, depending on kind of how noodly you want it. Again, if you followed any of my videos, you know I'm pretty chill about these sorts of things and I like to just keep it kind of cash. So I'm gonna take some of these less strip pieces out there and we're just gonna keep it as noodly as we can for kind of going quick in this video here. There we go, so we've filled this up. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up, I've got four peppers here, so the recipe serves four, so it's basically one pepper per person that we're just gonna cut into some strips here. So I like to just cut the top and the bottom off. And then we can just cut around the core here. And then we can cut our strips. Again, I like to cut them thin, but whatever makes it quick and easy for you. This recipe can, can be intimidating for time because it uses more vegetables, so it requires more chopping, which can make people feel like it's gonna take a really long time. But that depends how um, precise and careful you're trying to be, where I, I don't need to take my time or make things perfect. I'm just trying to get a meal on the table with my schedule, because just like you, I'm busy. So you're just trying to make it happen quickly, in a way that tastes good and is still gonna nourish your body. And that's kind of my goal in these things. I don't know about you. But... Okay, so that's two peppers, two more to go. 
Now I use red peppers because I like the vitamin C content in them um, and they add some nice color into this dish. But if you have something else on hand, like you've got green peppers on hand or whatever it is that you might have, go ahead and use that. It doesn't really matter. Oh, there's some parts in here that aren't look, looking super good, so we're gonna just cut those ones out. Um, it is really important to me that when you have something on hand, you can use it. I think there's a lot of value in that. Ooh, wasn't the nicest peppers, right? vegetables are going to make it feel like a traditional chow mein without the acidic foods in it which I mean when you read my book you'll see that there's nothing wrong with having some acidic food in your diet it's a matter of making it uh, no, minimal I think would be the, the key word there is not making it the prominent part of your diet and fruits and vegetables are your most alkaline food so the more of these you can eat the better so this is just one of my ways of kind of working around that. Okay, so we've got four peppers in there. Then I'm gonna take two cups of string peas. Now in all honesty, my pot's getting a little full <laughs> because this really uh, was a lot of cabbage. So we're gonna just work with it, but I might cook it down before I add in the broccoli. So I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, next I've got here about an inch of uh, ginger. That ginger I have already peeled. I used a spoon to just take the peel off, which was nice and simple. And now I'm just gonna chop it up. And again, if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not super picky about things being too small and too minced up because I do like to taste the flavor, but you can kind of mince it up as much as you like. Oops. There we go. I'm gonna add ginger in there. And then I've got eight cloves of garlic here. I love garlic, that's why I do eight cloves of garlic. It adds a lot of the flavor. But um, you've got a few options here for saving kind of time and effort. A, if you don't like that much garlic, don't use that much garlic. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you wanna save time, you can use half the amount of garlic and just use four cloves. Your other option also is to use pre-chopped garlic that you can pick up from the grocery store and then you're just taking a few spoonfuls and getting it to the amount that you're kind of comfortable with and you like. So the more garlic you like, the more you're gonna use. But for me, I prefer it fresh and I don't mind chopping it up, it doesn't take too long. I would already peeled this as well, so that's kind of an important to peel it and take off that end. And then you're just gonna give it a quick, again, rough chop, right? I mean, you can mince it as fine as you want. And I'll mince it a little more in a second, but I don't know, there's something about just tasting that garlic in there and knowing there's fresh garlic in there, which is so good for you and good for your gut bacteria as well. But I like to just keep it nice and prominent in my dishes, so. Let's finish up, we're halfway there. Again, you can see it's not taking me too long. This is probably one of the more labor intensive ones in terms of the amount of vegetables in it. Um, but it's the one that I would say is the most worth spending this time. But you can cut more corners. I mean, garlic, you can buy pre-minced as well. So like I was saying, you can get broccoli that's already pre-chopped as well in the store, which is helpful um, to save time. You can also get, you know, the packages of like cabbage salads. You can just throw out the dressing and the goodies and you can use that cabbage as the base of this that you cook up as well. So there are so many options to save even more time, um, but I would say these dishes are already super, super quick and easy to make. But if you're not a fan of being in the kitchen or you just wanna cut even more corners, I give ways to cut corners in these recipes the entire way through. There's lots of tips and tricks in there to help you out so that this does not become intimidating, but something that you actually wanna do. So after we get this garlic in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop up the whites of the green onions. So it's about half a bunch of green onions. We're gonna use both the greens and the whites. So my greens are looking a little sad on this bun, sorry. Um, but we're gonna start by just doing uh, the whites because that we wanna cook up. If you can't handle onion, you can just omit this step. I'm just gonna slice them in half and then then they slice them, but you don't have to have these in. It just, again, adds some good flavor. We're gonna use the greens as well because I don't wanna waste any of it, but we'll add that in fresh at the end. So the last step we're gonna do, whoops, is we're going to add in 
two cups of broccoli. Now, like I said, my pot's getting really full, so I just used too much cabbage on that one, but I don't mind. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it up and get it ready, and then I'm gonna um, walk you through what we're gonna do stove top, and I'll add the broccoli in after I can reduce that cabbage a little bit. So what can I say? I needed a bigger pot. You think with three boys at home, I would have figured that out already. Um, it doesn't take too long to chop up the two cups of broccoli because it's only about one head, but it is okay to also go and get pre-cut broccoli and save yourself the time and just take it right from a bag. Just go organic whenever possible so you have nothing crazy being sprayed on it. And that's about it, right? But we do the best that we can. All right, it turned off again. I give up, sorry, I finished the last little bit of chopping. It wasn't much, so I've got two cups of broccoli here. But like I said, I have a full pot. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on stovetop on medium and stir it as the cabbage reduces. And once it reduces by about half, I'll throw in this broccoli and I'm gonna cook it up for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So I've got it cooking on the stove. I added just a little bit of sesame oil and sea salt to it while it's cooking on medium for about 10 minutes. Once it reduced after just a couple minutes, I was able to add in that broccoli, you know, the way it goes. And then I'm just gonna quickly slice up the greens of the green onions. Remember we used half a bunch and we used the whites, but now we're actually gonna use the greens here. And we're gonna add it in once it's all cooked up. So that's really the only other prep that has to go into it while we wait. And then we'll add about two tablespoons of sesame seeds as well as another drizzle of sesame oil once it's done. And then we're good to go. All right, so we were able to reduce it and cook it down. So really what you're looking for is for the cabbage to soften up and for your vegetables to become bright in color like that um, broccoli as well as, I don't know if you can see there, the peppers, they're nice and bright in color. And it's that simple. So it's about 10 minutes on medium. And then I'm just gonna add in that green onion that we chopped up quickly while it was cooking. Excuse the noise, it's a little noisy. Then about two tablespoons of sesame seeds I'm gonna add in there. And because I really love sesame oil, I'm gonna add in just a smidge more of it. It helps to add a few more calories in there, as well as some healthy fats. And then you can mix it up and it's good to go. This recipe serves about four people. That's how simple it is. It's absolutely delicious. Now it's 100% alkaline like this, but you don't always have to have 100% alkaline. It's the 80-20 rule. So you can add in a little bit of organic tamari or coconut aminos if you'd like in there to add a little more of that saltiness and then you're good to go. So I hope you enjoy. If you haven't had a chance to check out the One Pot Alkaline Diet Cookbook, go order your copy today, shereestalby.com slash cookbook. Again, nothing to clean up but a cutting board and knife, so we are good.